Hey, you guys, welcome to this episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. And today I'm gonna answer the top five money questions that I get asked. So I host The Ramsey Show, and I get to talk to callers every single week about their questions. And even on social media, I get a ton of DMs. And listen, this is my favorite part of my job. I get to talk to people one-on-one and encourage them in their money journey. And also, some of the calls can be very uh, entertaining. Some of the social questions I get can be very entertaining too. But what's crazy is I get a lot of the same questions a lot, all the time. So now to me, our advice seems like common sense, but I know it's definitely not common sense to the world. So today I'm gonna talk through the top five things that I want people to know when it comes to very common money questions I get. All right, the first question I get a lot is, how do I get my spouse on board? This is a tough one, I'm gonna be honest, because you are inviting another person, right? If I'm just talking to you and helping you control you and you get to make decisions for you, that's one thing. But when you're trying to get someone else on board, it can be really tough. So what I would tell people is number one, tell them your why. So if you're just like, oh my gosh, I wanna never go on vacation or go out to eat and we need to take all of our money and we need to put it at the credit cards and blah, blah, blah. Your spouse may be like, you're insane. Like, what are you talking about? So go a little bit deeper and talk about why do you wanna do this? Why do you wanna get out of debt? Why do you wanna save for retirement? What, what is your why? Is it, could just be fear of like, oh my gosh, if one of us loses our job, we don't have enough money to cover next month's bills because there's no margin. Maybe it's fear, which is not a great motivator long-term, but short-term, it'll get you going. Uh, maybe it's that you don't wanna live how you grew up. I talk to a lot of people like, I wanna give my kids a different life than I had. Like whatever it is, express your why and your why shows more of your heart than the tactical side of money. And that's where you and your spouse can really connect. Number two, show them the actual numbers. I find this is really helpful for husbands to see, ladies out there. When you're like, hey, I wanna get out of debt, they're gonna be like, that's awesome, but I don't really wanna sacrifice or do this. But when you like lay out the numbers and you say, okay, we make this, we can cut this out of the budget, if we sell this, like you actually put a time frame down on paper, they can actually visually see it. Cause it's like, okay, it's gonna take this amount of time. Here's the calendar, could we do this? Like it actually gives some tactical reasoning behind your why. Now, if those don't work and you guys keep going around and around and around and around, I would honestly get a third party involved. So this could be maybe the Ramsey show. Be like, hey, you wanna listen to this podcast or read this book? Us at Ramsey could be the bad guys for a little bit. Uh, or I'll be honest too, I would get a therapist involved. If it's something that's really stressing you out and you guys are on complete opposite pages, it's gonna be really hard to have a very fruitful marriage if you're running on two separate tracks when it comes to money. Because when you are married, you are one. You are sharing a life with someone and money's a big part of that. All right, the second question I get asked a lot is, should I pause investing to pay off debt? And yes. We do recommend this, which I know a lot of people freak out and they're like, oh my gosh, Rachel, but I'm the match. I'm gonna miss the match. It's free money and all this. But when you're getting out of debt, staying as focused as possible, putting as much money as you can, taking everything that is possible to throw it out of the debt, to get out of debt as quickly as possible is going to free up your income. So this is really big. And again, it's pausing it because you'll press play and invest 15% of your income into retirement after it's done. But getting debt out of your life and getting your income back to be all yours is huge. All right, before I share the rest of the questions, I wanna tell you about one of our sponsors. So the clothes in my closet, I love them, but I don't wear all of them. And I hate to admit that, but it's true. But that's one reason I love Carly Jean Los Angeles and her clothing because her stuff, you guys, it's beautiful. It is so well made, it is high quality, it is flattering, it is timeless, and they are capsule pieces that you can mix and match all the time. I mean, it is, so wonderful. I have so many pieces from them that I just love so much because it's not like you're buying something really expensive for one big occasion. Can You can mix and match them and wear them all the time for different things and they're so comfortable. I love them so much. So go to carlyjeanlosangeles.com and use code Rachel for 20% off your first purchase. That's 20% off the entire site at carlyjeanlosangeles.com with code Rachel. All right, the third question that I get asked a lot is how much house can I afford? Oh, the housing conversation, you guys. It's so difficult because it's so frustrating. I get it. Like when you're buying a house today, interest rates, inventory, all of it. It's not awesome. But here's the deal. When you can buy a house that is best for your budget, that is when you need to buy a house, regardless of what is going on in the market, when it is best for you. So I want you out of debt. 
with a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. Okay, I want that done first. And then I want you to save up for a down payment. If you're a first time home buyer, 5% is great. If you're not, I would bump it up to like 10, 15%. If you can hit 20% down payment, you can avoid a lot of fees and penalties like PMI and it's great. But that's the range of down payment I want saved. And then when you buy the home, make sure you're on a 15 year fixed rate mortgage and your payment is no more than 25% of your take home pay. So that whole formula together sets you up to buy a house. Now, I always tell people, I understand that's a very conservative way to go about it. But listen, I've talked to so many people via social media, via at events, via on The Ramsey Show that have so much house, you guys, and they are stressed out. We talk numbers and their budget real quick. So much of their mortgage is eating up their house and they don't have an emergency fund. They have student loans still in credit card debt and they just feel so strapped. So when they thought this house was gonna be a blessing and an answer to their family's dreams, it ends up being a curse and a burden and it's stressful and it's not what they wanted it to be. So I want you to be at a place financially to go into a house to enjoy it and it not be a stress point for you. All right, the fourth common question I get is, am I an exception to the baby steps? And we get this a lot of different ways. Oh, Rachel, in, in my family, this, 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 or in my job, this, this, or this, or whatever it is. Listen, you guys, the baby steps are the baby steps for a reason. I'm gonna encourage you, do them in order because they're in order for a reason. We're not trying to like trick you into something weird. Like this is the most efficient way to get from point A to point B, which is stressed, broke, not know what you're doing with money, to wealthy, in control, peaceful, know where you're going with your future. Like the quickest way to do that tactically is the baby step. So do them in order and I'm telling you it works. Cause here's the deal, spend a few years of your life working these steps and then maybe if you get to, you know, four, five and six or even seven and you hate it and you hate your life, you can always choose to go back deep in debt with no savings and all the things. I don't think you will do that, but I'm telling you, work the steps in order. It's the most efficient way to, again, go from not feeling in control and stressed and not budgeting and all the things to feeling a level of control. So if you're not familiar with the baby steps, I will leave a link down below. So click on it and, and read about it, understand it. Because quickly, the seven baby steps is a thousand dollar emergency fund. Number two is to get out of debt. Number three is to get a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. And then you're gonna do four, five, and six together. Number four is funding 15% of your income into retirement. Baby step five is funding kids college. Baby step six is paying the house off early. Then once all that's done, or at least you know the house is paid off, kids college fund is good, then you move on to baby step seven, and that is just to build wealth and be extremely generous. So those are the seven baby steps. All right, the fifth question I get asked the most is how do I budget with an irregular income? Now, this is a tough one and I get it. I'm on commission, my husband's on commission, so knowing what we're gonna make every month, it's gonna vary. So you have to kind of guesstimate before the month begins. Say, okay, here's what I think we're gonna make. And you put that number at the top and then you're gonna list out all of your expenses, but you're gonna prioritize a few things. Your giving is big, saving, especially if you're on baby steps one or three, that's gonna be really big. And then your four walls, which is food, shelter, utilities, and transportation. Those are gonna be prioritized. Then everything else below, you're gonna just prioritize. And then as the money comes in and when you understand, okay, here's what we're gonna make on the 15th or the 31st or the 1st or however you get paid, then from there you can kind of figure out, okay, do will there be some budget items that we're not gonna do this month because we don't have the income for it? Is there some that maybe we can actually bump up and enjoy some because it's a bigger month? Whatever it is, you kind of have to fluctuate. But I get it, it takes a lot of intentionality and work, but it is worth it. And I would also say if you are in a seasonal job that you know it's gonna be really busy one season and not as much the other, we call those hills and valleys. So like if summer is like insane for you and you make a ton of money in the summer, then take some of that money and not don't spend it all, put it in a savings because when it gets to be November, December and you need some money because you're not making as much, you can pull from that account. So we call those hills and valleys. So if that is a rhythm for you, be aware of that. All right, you guys, I hope you found this episode really helpful. So whether you're new to Ramsey or you're just starting the baby steps or maybe you're already through your you know, debt-free journey and you are on your way, I hope this episode offered some wisdom and encouragement regardless of where you are. So send this video to a friend or a family member who may have some questions of their own and wanna have some of these conversations. So remember, you guys, to take control of your money and create a life you love. 